Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks, ranging from bestsellers to celebrity memoirs, news, business, and self-development. Every month, members get one credit to pick any title, plus two Audible originals from a monthly selection, and access to daily news digests from the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and the Washington Post, as well as guided meditation programs. Between a full-time job in IT and a full-time job in podcasting, it gets harder and harder to sit down and read the books I'm interested in. This is where Audible comes in. I can listen on my daily commute, relaxing, or while out running errands and still get in the books I've been wanting to get into. You can download titles and listen offline anytime, anywhere. The app is free and can be installed on all smartphones and tablets. Now you can try Audible risk-free with a special 30-day free trial by visiting audibletrial.com forward slash nerdery and murdery. That's audibletrial.com forward slash nerdery and murdery. Don't let your busy life get in the way of that great book you've been wanting to read. Go get your free trial of Audible today. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. This is Jeffrey, and we've talked about many times before that I experience problems and struggles with my mental health. And really, without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is therapy does work. It's helped for me. But but what is is, is therapy exactly? It's it's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships at work or you're not dealing well with stress. Whatever you need, it's really time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles. And, and it's time to start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you to help. BetterHelp is a customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. So join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. And there's a special offer to Nerdery and Murdery listeners. You can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash nerdery and murdery. That's betterhelp.com forward slash nerdery and murdery. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this podcast. Welcome to the soft, sensual, sunny, bubbly, fun, exciting world of nerdery and murdery. Do I sound that dumb when I do that? Yep. Welcome to our silver episode, episode 25, our wife swap episode. Wife swap. This episode comes out on November 21st, right before Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving season for everybody who's uh, getting ready for their, um, uh, their, 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 their Thanksgiving meal. So, Yes. Maybe Got they're it. listening to it while they're getting everything ready. I love it. I love it. Making the, making the stuffing, making the pies. I love the pies. The pies are my favorite. Well, today, as we record, uh, episode 12 uh, goes live to the world, which is one of my favorite, that's, favorite that's episodes. That's the Shadowrun episode, right? It is the Shadowrun episode. Yes. And I, I, we yes. had so much fun with that. You know, I, I listened live this morning, as I generally do, and we missed some edit points, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> nah. we, we still learn as we go. B.I. B.I. I think people will understand it. Uh, I, I wanted to have a, a, a quick talk. Real quick. With, uh, with, Intrad- with all of y'all. Huh? What? You are. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I'm Jeffrey with your nerdery. And I'm Zig with your murdery. We still don't get this right. 20, <laughs> 25 episodes in. 25. We still screw this up. Meh. Okay. Um, I, I just wanted to give a peek behind the curtain as we, as we go through this, especially because I talked about edit points. Um, one of the things that I'm used to... Uh, cause I've known you for so long is yes, 
I have I have lots and lots of notes that I go through on my episodes because I have to do a ton of research. I've got to get facts together. I've got to get dates. I've got to get people. Uh-huh. Um, for yours, they're very often subjects you're very familiar with, mm-hmm. and and I know you that when you're you're contemplating your next point, you do a ver- you do pauses. And and that's and that's what have to be edited out the most is those My pauses. pauses. They might be one second, two second, three second, but I sit there and I have to go through. And it's like okay, I think it was here. Okay, back up, listen. Okay, it went to here. Oh wait, I got to back up. I got to hear it again. So you know, I it was just funny as as I went through the uh, the edits for our last episode. They you get know. to see how my brain works. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I know that I stammer when I'm when I'm thinking through a uh, a thought. It's just it's just kind of funny as as we go back through the edits. Um, I also wanted to tell y'all the coolest thing happened this week. What? So one of our listeners and one of our patrons uh-huh. called me up and said, hey, my uh, my son is meeting me for lunch. He would like to meet you. What? And he's a listener. What? He, he thinks you're very funny. Me? Yes. Hey. He thinks you're very funny, and uh, he loves listening to the murdery. So it's the first fan of the show mm-hmm. that I've met that I never knew. Right on. You know, met in person. So that was really, really cool. Someone we didn't know who likes the show. Yes. Nice. So, so shout out to Alec. I did tell him. What shout the, out to Alec. I told him what this episode was going to be, and he's very excited because he's a fan of this as well. So uh, just just had to give it because that was that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, I mean, because most of the fans I've got are people I already know or people that you know. Or, right. Same, yeah, yeah. Same thing for me. So... So really, really cool that 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 happened. I've been I've been just kind of you know it, it, I don't know I I don't know I can't, I can't explain it. It was just kind of neat. So, right on. Um, Love you, Alec. Yeah. <laughs> so you got anything uh, anything for this episode you need to discuss? Not at the moment. No, I've been basically on call all week. So yeah, yeah <laughs> uh, I I have been too. Yeah. Um, uh, so. Uh, yeah, so, uh, I get to do the nerdery side today and yes. you're doing the murdery. So yes. I'm super excited to hear what your murder subject is for, for me, for the nerdery side. Um, it, I, I'm, I'm really covering an obsession of mine. Uh, I would like to give a shout out to our patron, Karen. She asked us to cover this in the first place, and I thought it was perfect for my nerdery topic. So thanks, Karen. What up, Karen? Do appreciate that. Um, for my references on here, uh, I got my information from biography, uh, Wikipedia, mental floss, Goliath, Rolling Stone, the Atlantic. And this is Stephen King. Oh yeah. Right. I figured you'd do this. (laughs) This is going to be long. Okay. I have a lot of notes here. Um, Stephen King has been a favorite of mine since I was very, very young. Mm Mm-hmm. I, I think my first exposure to uh, to Stephen King was either the movie Carrie, The Shining, or Creep Show. Mm-hmm. Um, sitting in my room watching scary movies way later than I probably should have on some major cable network. Uh, you know, back then we we had HBO, Showtime, and Cinemax. Um, but, Skinemax. Skinemax. Um, but it might have been the books. I, I'm I'm not really sure. I looked through his bibliography. Uh, and looked at the year of releases, and and I've been a fan of Stephen King since the seventies. Right on. Um, Carrie came out in nineteen seventy four, mm-hmm. so I would have been way too young to read that at the time. Yeah. you know, because I was three. But I know that for a fact I was reading his books long before The Talisman and The Eyes of the Dragon, which came out in 84. So yeah. somewhere in that 10-year range. <laughs> somewhere between 3 and right. 13. I, I, somewhere in there, I became a fan of Stephen King. Right on. Most, I, I figure probably closer to 74 than 84. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, somewhere somewhere in there. Somewhere around the 1979, 1980 sweet spot. Maybe. Yeah, right on. Um, I can remember being, uh, had the, the crap scared out of me by Salem's Lot when it was on TV. Yeah, Salem's Lot was scary. It was a really scary one. But, but with that, um, who, who is Stephen King? Mm-hmm. So Stephen King was born Stephen Edwin King. Uh, in, he was born in Portland, Maine on September 21st, 1947. Okay. Uh, his father, Donald Edwin King, was a merchant seaman, um, 
who was born with the last name of Pollock, but he changed it to King as an adult. I really didn't find a whole lot on that. Okay. Um, uh, his mother was uh, Nellie Ruth Pillsbury. Uh, she married Donald in Scarborough, Maine on July 23rd, 1939. Uh, when he was two years old, his father left, uh, and, and she left, uh, and he, he left, uh, Stephen's mother to raise both him and his older brother, David, um, all by herself, reportedly with great financial strain. So, mm-hmm. you know, they, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't, they weren't rich by any means. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that'll kind of come into play with him too. Um, they moved around from place to place. They lived off of relatives until Stephen was 11 when they moved to Durham, Maine. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it was here that her mother cared for her parents until their deaths. And then she became a caregiver in a local residential facility for the mentally challenged. Huh? Yeah. You know, they, as we, as we go through his early life, you're going to see various little things that probably all had an effect on him later on the dark things that he writes, you know, the horror that he writes. Uh, He was raised a Methodist, but he lost his belief in organized religion while he was in high school. He says to this day that he's not religious, but he does choose to believe in the existence of God. Okay. Um, The first event that may have led to uh, what what caused him to write the things that he writes or what impressed him, uh, it was said that as a child, he apparently witnessed one of his friends being struck and killed by a train. Oh, no. But he doesn't have any memory of the event. Um, His family said that when he returned home that day that he was speechless and seemingly in shock, but they didn't find out about the death till later. Okay. So... Who who knows with that one? He doesn't really have a memory of it, but his family says they do. Wow. Um, some commentators have suggested that this is the event that may have psychologically inspired some of his darker work. Yeah. But Steve, like, like I said, Stephen says he Stephen King says he has no memory of it, and he makes no mention of it in yeah. his memoir on writing. Yeah. So. He says that his inspiration came when he was going through an attic with his brother. And Stephen uncovered a paperback version of a collection of short stories by H.P. Lovecraft that belonged to his father. Oh, Lovecraft. He did tell Barnes and Noble's uh, uh, Barnes and Noble Studios in a 2009 interview. I wish that I'd, I I knew that I knew that I'd found home when I read this book. Mm-hmm. So two 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 possible theories of, of of why he started writing what he what he wrote. Uh, he graduated from Libson Falls High School in Maine uh, in 1966. Uh, he had an early interest in horror as an avid reader of EC horror comics, okay. uh, including Tales from the Crypt, which he would pay tribute to yeah. in his screenplay later for Creepshow. Yes. Uh, he began writing for fun while in school. Uh, he contributed articles to Dave's Rag, which was a newspaper his brother's uh, his brother published using a mimeograph machine. <laughs> Dave's Rag. Uh, his first story to be published independently was I, uh, was, I was a Teenage Grave Robber, mm-hmm. uh, which was serialized over four issues in the fanzine Comics Review in 1965. Oh, nice. Uh, the following year, the story was published in revised form uh, as In a Half World of Terror uh, in another fanzine, Stories of Suspense. He did win a uh, Scholastic Art and Writing Award as a teen. Oh, nice. And his first professional story, The Glass Floor, was sold to Startling Mystery Stories in 1967. Oh, wow. So, 67, he was kind of young. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was very young at the time uh, because he was just barely in college. Okay. It's from 1966 to 1970. uh, Stephen King studied at the University of Maine, graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in English. Okay. Uh, he met his future wife, Tabitha Spruce, here, and their daughter, Naomi Rachel, was born in 1970. Uh, he and Tabitha got married in 1971. Okay. Uh, while here, he wrote a column for the student newspaper called Stephen King's Garbage Truck. <laughs> and he held a variety of jobs to pay for his education, including janitor, gas pump attendant, and a worker at an industrial laundry. Nice. Um, after graduating University of Maine, Stephen King, uh, earned a certificate to teach high school, but he was unable to find teaching jobs immediately. And this is kind of where I want to point out that many of the characters or storylines, um, would come directly from his own life. Yeah. 
uh, Jack Torrance from The Shining was a school teacher mm-hmm. uh, that had recently been fired for his drinking problems and his temper. Uh-huh. Uh, Jack wanted desperately to become a writer and saw the job at the Overlook as a place for him to discuss, uh, for him to focus on his writing away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. Right on. Uh, the Dark Half was a story about Stephen King and Richard Bachman. Mm-hmm. Uh, misery was part of his own fear of a murderous fan. Oh wow. Uh, Pet Cemetery was based on a home he and his family lived in while he was a writer in residence and professor at University of Maine. Okay. Uh, and he was also in his own book, In the Dark Tower uh, Saga, as an actual character. <laughs> uh, it's revealed in the books uh, that Stephen King is able to channel the spirit of Gan in order to see what's happening in Roland Deschain's world, uh, which he then writes down his books. Right on. So pretty cool. Oh yeah, he also uh, he, he is also in uh, the Halloween episode of Quantum Leap. Yes, as a little kid. Yes. <laughs> well, and, and he he's also in some of his he he's in many of his movies as mm-hmm. a cameo appearance. Oh yeah. The only one I believe that he was starred in mm-hmm. was Creep Show. Oh yeah. Where the 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 meteor meteor shit meteor shit. Uh, I think that's the only one he actually starred in. Most of them, he's he's got a bit part, yeah. but he does uh, uh, play into into his movies. Um, Stephen King then began selling short stories to men's magazines, porn magazines, yeah, uh, to make money for his family. Uh, the short story, The Raft, was published in Adam Magazine. Okay, well, I know that uh, like Playboy paid quite a bit for some of those stories because there's a lot of really great sci-fi stuff that is in Playboy. They didn't pay a whole lot. Oh, they not, didn't? Not the ones he was going okay. to. He might have, I think he might have gotten some stuff in Playboy later, yeah. but these were not huge magazines. Okay. Um, like Adam Magazine. You ever heard of that? No. Um, and uh, It's not called boobs. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Butts. Um, so after he published that, he, he became annoyed one day that a traffic cone knocked his muffler loose. Oh, so no. he stole the traffic cone. <laughs> he he got arrested for petty larceny, but he didn't have the money to pay the $250 fine. Oh, no. The check for the raft arrived, and he used that to pay for his fine. Fine. For <laughs> taking the traffic. Does he still have the traffic cone? Uh, you know what it didn't say? I, I would. I think he gave that back. Um, in 1971, he was hired as a teacher at Ham- Hampton Academy, uh, at, in Hampton, uh, Maine. Okay. Uh, he contributed, continued contributing short stories to magazines, uh, and worked on ideas for his other novels. Yeah. In 1973, Carrie was accepted by publishing house Doubleday. Uh-huh. Uh, this was actually his fourth novel, but the first to be published. Okay. Um. I bet it, Doubleday was happy about that. Well... <laughs> Eventually. Yeah. Yes, eventually. Uh, he wrote it on a portable typewriter that belonged to his wife, and it began as a short story for Cavalier Magazine. Okay. Porn magazine. No, yeah. not, not boobs or butts. The funny thing was, he tossed the first three pages of it in the trash. He, really? He, he thought it was crap. He thought it was garbage. And his wife fished it out and encouraged him to finish the story, saying she'd help him with the female perspective, which he was having, uh, having yeah. a hard time with. Uh, Stephen King once said in Adelina magazine, uh, I persisted because I was dry and had no better ideas. My considered opinion was that I had written the world's all time loser. So that was his thoughts on Carrie. On Carrie? Uh Wow. Uh, when Carrie was chosen for publication, uh, the King's phone was out of service (laughs) and Doubleday editor, William Thompson, who would eventually become Stephen King's close friend, sent a telegram to the King house in late March or early April of 73, which read, Carry officially a double day book, $2,500 advance against royalties. Congrats, kid. The future lies ahead. Bill. Nice. Uh, St- Stephen King bought a Ford Pinto with the advance. <laughs> a new one. A new point Ford Pinto. Yeah. yeah. Um, so 2,500 was his advance. Yeah. On May 13th, 1973, New American Library bought the paperback rights for $400,000, which is close to $2.5 million today. Oh, wow. So did he get that money? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he went from not being able to pay for stealing a traffic cone to 
the equivalent of what you said, $2 million? $2.5 million. Yeah, yeah. to $2.5 million in like, like a year, year and a half, something mm-hmm. like that? Wow. In 1976, it was made into a successful horror film, mm-hmm. grossing over $33.8 million against its $1.8 million budget. Right on. You know what? I have a story about this because I read this in Dance Macabre, um, which is one of his books about horror, right? It's a dissertation. And he talks about going, afraid that... that that uh, not everybody was going to like the carry movie, so he he went to a uh, he went to a, a theater that was real run down and kind of kind of in a bad part of town to see if you could be scared. And those guys were scared. He knew he had a hit. Yeah, those guys were scared. Yeah, I I remember that story from uh, from Don's Macabre. That's a that's a great book. One of them that I've read. Right on. Um, in 1985, he wrote his first work in the comic book world, Mm -hmm. writing a few pages, uh, for the benefit, uh, X-Men comic book, Heroes for Hope, starring the X-Men. Uh, the book profits were donated to assist with famine relief in Africa. In 1986, he wrote the introduction to Batman number 400, which was an anniversary issue. And he expressed his preference for Batman over Superman. And he would also write uh, It in 1986, which was the best-selling hardcover novel that year. In the late 1970s, uh, Stephen King began the Dark Tower books, beginning with The Gunslinger. And this would become an eight-book epic series published over four decades. Wow. So we'll talk about this one a little more later. But yeah, uh, four decades for that. Uh, Also in the late 70s and early 80s, he began publishing a handful of short novels under the pseudonym Richard Bachman. The idea was to, the the idea behind this was to test whether he could replicate his success again because he had fears that his popularity was an accident. Right on, right on. You know what? I see a difference. I actually like the Bachman stuff better than I do the Stephen King stuff. I talk about that. Okay. I do talk about that. No, please. Um, there's an alternate explanation, uh, was that publishing standards at the time only allowed a writer to publish a single book a year. Right. So other yeah. people think it's cause he won more books. Cause he can, he can crank them out. Oh yes, he can. Uh, he was exposed as Richard Bachman by a persistent Washington DC bookstore clerk who located publisher records at the library of Congress. The name Stephen King is the author of one of the Bachman books. Right on. Can you get that? No. Okay. Um, the name, by the way, was taken from the Bachman Turner Overdrive, which he yeah. was a fan. Bachman Turner Overweight. Um, and, and so this is where I have my bullet point to discuss the writing of, of Stephen King and Richard Bachman because they are similar but different. Right. Um, there's even a whole biography of Steve, of Richard Bachman in a picture. Um, <laughs> Stephen King later killed off Richard Bachman, claiming he died from cancer uh a ki- died from cancer of the pseudonym, a rare <laughs> form of schizonomia. Um, <laughs> cancer of the pseudonym. <laughs> that tickled me. <laughs> but the but the writing style is very different. You can there's a, there's a very yeah. it's it's definitively different. I think so. I think so because honestly, I, I am not a huge fan of Stephen King. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that he's bad. Um, mm-hmm. I, I can tell that he is a good writer. I, I like. Right. It. I just I like. Bachman's style better, and I can tell the difference. Most people can. Uh, really, really, if you read them, there it's amazing that one single person can edit his writing style uh-huh. like that. There's similarities for sure. Oh yeah, but but the the tone is different in the Bachman books. Um, I think that's what it is. It's almost like it's coming from uh, like a the. the, the 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 narrator is a different person, right? Yeah. Well, and the book, the dark half, is really about that. That he that the that the writer in the dark half that it's actually his other personality, his other side that mm-hmm. really writes the horror. Oh, um, and that, he, that he's actually Richard Bachman, but Stephen King is the is the dark half. Um, uh, maybe. Okay. Uh, right on. No, I get it. It's been a while since I've read the dark half yeah. and, and I, I can't, I can't or, remember the or, characters names, yeah. but the, the whole thing of the dark half is that there was the, when the, when the main character was born, there was actually a twin that had to basically be killed. Right on. Um, but the, but, but the twin remains in his head uh-huh. and it's actually a different person. It's oh, wow. a very different person, Wow, uh, very dark. And, um, 
I, I had remembered, I, I, I wrote the notes and I got rid of them, but I'll say it here again. I thought I remembered there being a People Magazine article with Stephen King at a grave site killing, burying Richard Bachman, but that's actually in the movie The Dark Half. So. Right on. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> when I when I went and looked up, I'm like, I know this exists, but no, it was. So, so yeah, so there. Like I said, if you read them, there's there, yeah. there's no question. It's almost like two different people. Mm-hmm. There's many of the nuances that are similar. Uh-huh. Um, but I I love the book, the yeah. Bachman books. Yeah. I I love all of uh, all of Stephen King the Bachman books that I've read. So. Um, Stephen King said the formula for learning to write well, uh, was quote, read and write four to six hours a day. If you cannot find the time for that, you can't expect to become a good writer. Uh, he sets out each day with a quota of 2000 words and will not stop until it's met. And I've, I've read a lot of other writers follow a very similar path. As far as defining a talent for writing, he says, if you wrote something for which someone sent you a check, if you cashed the check and it didn't bounce, and if you then paid the light bill with that money, I consider you talented. There you go. Uh, when asked why he writes, he responded, quote, the answer to that is fairly simple. There was nothing else I was made to do. I was made to write stories, and I love to write stories. That's why I do it. I really can't imagine doing anything else, and I can't imagine not doing what I do. Right on. Uh, he did develop a severe drinking problem in the 1970s that would last for more than a decade. Oh, no. Um, after an intervention with his friends and family, he sought help. And as of the late 80s, he, uh, or from the late 80s, he remained sober. Right on. Uh, he wrote his first novel after becoming sober, mm-hmm. which was Needful Things. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. I kind of see that. Yeah. Uh, Stephen and Tabitha, Tabitha King now donate approximately $4 million a year to libraries, local fire departments that need updated equipment, schools, and many organizations that underwrite the arts. Nice. Uh, the Stephen and Tabitha King Foundation ranks sixth among main charities in term, terms of annual giving with over $2.8 million in grants every year. Just making Maine better. Mm-hmm. That's that's awesome. And, and, and keeping it local, too. That's, yeah. that's really groovy. Yeah. Uh, they have three children, Naomi, who is a Unitarian Universalist church minister in Plant- Plantation, Florida, mm-hmm. uh, as well as Owen and Joseph King, who are both authors themselves. Yeah. Uh, and, okay, so the, the, the oldest daughter is the one that was born when he was still in college, right? Correct. Yeah. Or, correct. Yeah. Naomi. Naomi. Uh, Stephen King has written 62 novels and 200 short stories. He's sold more than 350 million copies of his books. Here's where I kind of talk about the type of fan I am. And it's not, I, I mean, there's people who are way bigger fans than I am, but out of his 62 novels, I've read 50 of them. Oh, wow. I've read nine of his 11 collections. Uh huh. I've read two of his five nonfiction and I've seen 39 of the 49 movies in which he is, his books are based. Wow. That they're based off his books. So. Well, that's, that's why I figured that we, we would probably do Stephen King on one of these wife swaps. So that's that's the fan I am. Yes. I, I, I'm very, I, very much I, a fan. I can't attest you have been a Stephen King fan since I have known you. Yeah. Um, why are his books so good? Character development. Yes. That's, that's the one thing I'm going to point to. Because you care about the characters. Yeah, you can inhabit them yes. when you're reading them. Yeah. Um, he spends a very long time building the characters, and you become emotionally involved in their lives. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Stephen King could draw a picture in your head better than any other writer. Um, so many of his books, I, I, I could see the exact actor that would be a perfect fit for the movie. Yeah. Um, but that's also what makes it so difficult to make a Stephen King movie. Yeah. He's so good about making you visualize the book that often the screen adaptation it can be a disappointment. It, it pales in comparison. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then with that, I really kind of wanted to discuss um, his, some of his books, movies, and TV. Um, my favorite books mm-hmm. were The Talisman, mm-hmm. The Stand, uh-huh. The Long Walk, mm-hmm. The Running Man, uh-huh. The Dark Tower series, uh-huh. The Eyes of the Dragon, uh-huh. and 112263. Okay. Uh, the Talisman was my favorite for so long. Did they ever make that movie? Which one? The Talisman? I have a bullet point on that. <laughs> okay, groovy. <laughs> uh, no, they have not. Okay. Um, but it was my favorite for many, many years until 11 Oh. Um, I loved that series so much. I don't think I've ever read the book. Of 11 yeah. We'll talk about it. Okay. I, uh, oh, my favorite, I think, is The Green Mile, the book. 
Uh, I, I do. The I Green did not get very it good because I, I know he was selling them one little section at a time. Uh-huh. I didn't read it until they were. It was one book. Well, and 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 I'll tell you what pissed me off, and and I'll kind of get I'll get into it when Sorry. I talk about the Dark Tower. Is there was a there was a couple of times where we waited years in between Dark Tower books. Mm-hmm. And I remember the Green Mile came out during one of those hiatus. Oh, yeah. I, I remember this so conversation. so mad about that. You were so mad, and then you started reading, and you're like, oh, man, this is really good. And it, they were <laughs> really good. I mean, I bought them every single time they came out. They were they were just beautiful. Um, the Talisman was originally published on November 8th, 1984. I, I tried finding something about this, and you'll hear this as we go along. He published an awful lot of his books in November. Uh-huh. I don't know why. I couldn't find anything on that. So Maybe that's just when he likes to do it. I guess. Yeah. I guess. I mean, George Lucas was May around yeah. his birthday. So, yeah. um, This was written as a collaboration between Stephen King and Peter Straub. Okay. Um, and it follows the adventure of 12-year-old Jack Sawyer, who travels across the country and the territories, uh, to save his mother, who is dying of cancer, by finding a crystal called the Talisman. Mm-hmm. As a movie, this has been in development hell forever. Uh, I know at least since I was in high school. I graduated high school in 1991 mm-hmm. because Richie, I hate to call you out, Richie, uh, <laughs> and I discussed it at length. Hey, they're supposed to be making a movie. Hey, they're supposed to be making a movie. Hey, they're supposed to... Yeah, nothing. So the movie rights were bought in 1982. What? Two years before the book was released. Who bought them? Steven Spielberg. <laughs> now, here's the good news. Okay. It's back in the works as of this year, uh-huh. and a series uh, is is being produced by the Duffer Brothers of Stranger Things. <gasps> it's they going, can do it right. It's going to be produced by Netflix in association with Amblin Television and Paramount uh-huh. Television Well, there Studios. you go. There you go. So we are going to get a treatment of this and the Duffer Brothers. I'm, I'm, I'm so stoked about this. Oh, yeah. Um, We're getting another season of Stranger Things too, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so. The trailer is out already. Oh, I may have to check that out. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the date that that's coming out, but but I was really excited when I saw that they're doing it. Um, this is a beautiful book. Yeah. It is a beautiful book. Uh, like I said, about uh, a young boy, uh, Jack, mm-hmm. who learns about the territories mm-hmm. and and the territories and our world are similar. Mm-hmm. But different. Okay. Um, the territories. So in in the territories, distances are shorter. Uh huh. So Jack travels in the territories more as as much as he can. I yeah. take that back. Not more because when he comes back into our world, he's gone much farther. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it makes sense. Like hyperspace. Yeah. Okay. Um, people in the territories have some, or some have twinners, so they're they're kind of copies of the people in our world, but that's not common because again, the, the territories are smaller. Mm-hmm. So not everybody has a twinner. Okay. Um, it's a, it's a great book. It's a beautiful book. And, and it really is the story of Jack becoming a man. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, 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 it only goes over, if I recall correctly, a year. Uh-huh. Um, but, but he does have to grow up on this journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, he meets people along the way. He gets a traveling companion for a while, which is that, that gets heartbreaking. Um, he ends up bringing along a childhood friend with him at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's just, it's a heart wrenching story, but it's a beautiful story. Right on. Um, there was a sequel called Black House mm-hmm. uh, with Jack as an adult. I, I wasn't as big of a fan of Black House. Okay. Um, and there's a third installment that's being written. Okay. So um, this does have many ties into the Dark Tower series, which a lot of Stephen King's books do. Um, in this one, you get the Crimson King, Randall Flag, and the Dark Tower. Um, I, I'm sorry. Those are the one. It, Crimson King Crimson King does come into play in Black House. I don't remember if Randall Flagg does or not, but the Dark Tower definitely does. Um, so he, he likes to cross and interweave his books. Right on. Uh, the next one, 112263. I'm going to be honest. I think that's the most perfect book ever written. Really? It's a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, 
the book was originally published uh, November 8th, again, November uh, uh-huh. 8th, 2011. Uh, the movie was released on Hulu February 15th, 2016. Yeah. Uh, it had... Uh, one one hour and a half episode and seven hour long episodes. Yes, um, I thought that was brilliant, and I you know I loved um, oh what's his name in it? I thought he was really good too. Um, I know who you're talking about, and I can see him, but yeah. I can't remember the actor right yes, now. Yes, yes, we'll, we'll get it here at some Franco, point. James Franco, James Franco. Yes. Thank you. Um, the just a, just a quick quick synopsis of this book. Uh, the main character Jack Epping. Uh, must travel through a door that takes him back to 1958 to determine how to save JFK from assassination on 11-22-63. Um, he comes back through that door a few times. Yeah. Um, but when he goes back through the door, he's back in 1958 again. Yeah. Everything resets uh-huh. when he goes back through. Um, time also doesn't like him trying to change things. No, it does not. It will throw all kinds of disasters in his way to stop him from changing time. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I liked the Hulu adaptation of, of the book um, until the last episode. I really felt that the last episode was just hastily thrown together. Uh-huh. I didn't think they knew how to end it. It was like it was a whole different set of writers uh, took on the last episode without knowing much about the previous episodes. <laughs> So well, you think it's maybe because they they rushed it along? I, that's what I do. I think the last maybe episode they, was instead of rushed. it being one episode, it probably should have been two or an hour and a half or maybe uh, it just it it just I, I don't know. It just seemed I, I just didn't like the ending. It was very disjointed from the rest of it. Right on. Um, please read the book. Okay, I, I'm I have already yeah yeah so you will enjoy because here's what you're going to get in the book that you don't get in the movie. You and I lived in Benbrook, Texas. Yeah. In the book, you will know, uh, uh, oh, God, who killed JFK? Uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. Thank you. Wow. You will know the house Lee Harvey Oswald lived in Benbrook yeah, by because Stephen we lived, King's We lived right around the corner from it. Um, Stephen King came to Fort Worth, uh, D- Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, and researched all the locations for yeah. 11 63 He was very accurate with his details. Um, you will. It, it is a... Beautiful, beautiful book. Um, and and I, I could read that over and over and right over on. again. Um, so that's that's why one of one that's one of my favorites. Uh the next one is The Stand. Okay. Another one I can read over and over again. Yeah. I just love this book. Yeah, I love the stand too. Uh it was originally published October third, nineteen seventy eight. Uh, the first movie, which was a miniseries, uh, was released on May 8th, 1994, as four hour and a half episodes. Mm-hmm. The second movie, another miniseries, was released on December 16th, 2020, and there were nine approximately one hour episodes. Um, this is a book about a post apocalyptic, it's a post apocalyptic dark fantasy novel. Uh, the plot centers around a pandemic of, we- of a weaponized strain of influenza. Captain almost, Trips. Yes, Captain Trips, that almost kills the entire world population, and the few survivors uh, unite in groups and establish a new social system and engage in confrontation with each other. Mm-hmm. That's the official synopsis. Okay. I love this book. Yes. Um, and. This this was one of the first ones that I really really remember reading because I read the, the the first version I read was the unedited version. Yeah, you know some people have read the first one that was edited. Yeah. up. I read the unedited, um, and I could see the characters yeah. in my head so well, and and you and you just become emotionally yeah. involved with I, every character. I, I was reading the original version of it, and I remember this in Stranger in Strange Land, and Keith. Our friend Keith, Keith Chenoweth, looked at me and said, stop reading it. Stop reading it. Stop reading both of those books. And went and got the the, the unexpurgated versions off of his shelf and mm-hmm. said, finish up these. And I ended up giving them back to There him. you go. Yeah. Um, I have read The Stand mm-hmm. many, many times. Um, you know, it's really the fight between good and evil. Um, the, the, the good survivors in Boulder, Colorado, mm-hmm. and then the evil survivors in... Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. Viva um, Las Vegas. As I said, ABC had the first adaptation in mm-hmm. 1994, and I really thought that the cast was was near perfect. I, I really, really, and, and it, it's you could go back a few years later and watch it, and it's still good. I have watched it yeah. several years later. The problem is, it ended somewhat poorly. Yeah. 
um, in the in the original. It's almost like they rushed to finish it, just like a, a eleven. A little bit, yeah. Uh, CBS All Access, which is now Paramount Plus, released a nine episode miniseries in twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. I wanted this to be good. Yeah, I thought it was surely, shot well. I thought surely CBS would make a good one. Yeah, it it was shot really really well. They've done other great shows over the last few years. Uh huh. This was awful. It was terrible. You didn't get you didn't you didn't get invested with the characters. No, you cared nothing for the characters. The casting and was not good. Maybe Larry. Maybe I didn't Larry. feel anything for Larry. I felt I, Larry nothing. was the only one that I could really get in touch with. I mean, you you have no I you you really don't get. You, oh God, you don't get the connection between Nick mm-hmm. and 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 M O O N. That spells Moon. Um, oh, Tom Cullen. Tom, Tom Cullen. Jeez, I'm. Awful today. Yeah. Um, you you don't get why it you don't get why it's so sad that Tom Cullen has to go. Yeah. You don't get why it's so sad that the judge gets sent out. Yeah. You don't. You just don't get the connection. Um, they didn't have Fran and um, uh, and Harold and Stu travel mm-hmm. together long enough. No. In the movie. No. And they could have. Yeah. Um, because there is, there is such a deep connection that happens there. And then the tragic events that follow. Yeah. Poor Harold. They, they, they just did a terrible job. Yeah. I, I'm, I was so upset with their treatment of this movie. Plus the nonlinear fashion that they did yeah. was, it was so hard to follow. Yeah. If you didn't read the book, you have no idea what was going on. Right. They didn't hardly have anything about trash can man. Yeah. Um, uh, what's his name? Skarsgård, uh, that played Randall Flagg. Yeah. Was not good. He was not good as an evil character, and he should be an evil character. Yeah. He is the embodiment of evil. I, I just, I, 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 I was so upset. The I, I only, just, okay, see, the only thing I liked about that series is what happened to Flagg in the post credit scene. Well, because that wasn't in the original series, and I thought it should have been. But that's that is in the book. Yeah, it is. And I and I love. I, yeah. I I agree with you. I love that they put that in because that's how the book ends yeah. too. So so that's the one thing they did that they did that was good that they did not do in the original ABC one. So, um, my next book is The Running Man, uh-huh. which is a great short story by Richard Bachman. Yes. Uh, the book was re- originally released in May of no- 1982, not mm-hmm. November. Yeah. Uh, it was later released in the Bachman books in October, on October 4th, 1985. That's where I read it. That and the long, most, I think it was the long walk is the other one. Yeah. 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 Most people, and I love the long walk. That's actually coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, most people mm-hmm. read this in the Bachman books. That's yeah. how I read it. Yeah. Um, this is a novel set in a dystopian United States during the year 2025. Okay. Yeah. I hate to stop you there. Please. But in the movie, The Running Man, and I know it. I've got it. Okay. So like I said, I always said, every time I see a movie that Arnold Schwarzenegger's in, I can picture somebody else. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want you to get that movie in your mind Mm -hmm. with the idea of the book in Mm -hmm. in your mind. Right. Right. I'm with you. Okay. And we're going to replace him with, with the actor who played Reese. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Right? No, no, see, no, you I can know. see it. Yeah, oh, I yeah. know. I know. Um, because that's the thing. But I would have kept Richard Dawson because he was great. <laughs> well, Richard Dawson was brilliant in in, in this. Um, and, yeah, we'll get there in a second. We'll get there okay. in a second. Um, so it's set during the year 2025. Uh, the nation's economy is in ruins uh-huh. and world violence has been rising. Uh, The story follows protagonist Ben Richards as he participates in the reality show The Running Man, in which contestants are allowed to go anywhere in the world, Mm -hmm. and they're chased by the general public who get a huge bounty uh, if they kill him. Uh, The runners actually have to send videotapes uh, back to the TV studios, and supposedly they don't track them that way, but yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. Um, But when you, you, you... if the movie was a standalone movie, it's an okay action movie. Yeah. As The Running Man, mm-hmm. it's terrible. Yeah, it's awful. Because it's in a studio, mm-hmm. and, and it's, oh, it's just... Yeah, it's, it's just, set on uh, a course, yes, not all over the world. Right. And in the book, you can go anywhere in the world, mm-hmm. but you have everybody in the world looking for you, because there's a monetary prize yes. for people who give information to find the runners. Yeah. 
And um, uh, Ben Richards, he goes all over the place. Yes, he does. Um, uh, all over the United States. He doesn't leave the United States. But, uh, but yeah, people, people see him and he's got to send in these videotapes. Um, it's, it's such a better book. It's mm-hmm. such a better book. Yeah. But I agree. The character is not this muscle bound cop. Number no. one. No. Um, somebody that got railroaded. He's this guy who's poor uh-huh. and gets on the running man because yeah. I, I think it's to help his wife. Yeah. His wife got sick, sick yeah. because he was scraping some sort of plates or something in his work, and he was bringing that radio radiation home, and that's yeah. what made his yeah, wife yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He himself uh, didn't get sick. No. So, so it's it's a much better book than a movie. So, I mean, I mean, please yeah. read that read that book. Good one. And again, it's a, it's it's short. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Long Walk is my next one. Another Richard uh, Richard Bachman book, uh, originally released in July of seventy nine. And later released in the Bachman books, October 4th, 1985. And it's set in dystopian America, ruled by a totalitarian and militaristic dictator. Uh, The plot revolves around the contestants of a grueling annual walking contest. I put in here, think of the Maze Runner meets Hunger Games. Yeah. Because that's really what it is. Um, It's it's a beautiful book. (laughs) It's not the running man, it's the walking man. (laughs) Right. And it's it's just, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, Yeah. the that one that particular book is all about psychology. Yes. Um as these children, I mean they're 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 young adults. Yeah. Um enter this game which they voluntarily yeah uh, uh 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 say that they'll enter and then they have to be picked from a lottery to go on this walk from Upper Maine down to Massachusetts. Or down to Connecticut. It's been yeah. a long time. It's, it's, a, it's a long walk. It's it's long. They they have to walk constantly. They mm-hmm. never stop. Yeah. They have to walk at four miles per hour or or greater at all times. At all times. If they ever go below the four miles an hour, they get a warning. Mm-hmm. Do it again. They get a second. Mm-hmm. Do it again. They're shot and killed. Yep. Um, the, 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 the first person to cross the finish line wins everything they want for the rest of their life. Yep. Um. And so, yeah, as, as these, as these young adults are on this walk, the psycho, the, just the psychological stuff that they all go through is just, I I can see it in my head. I I can see the, the, the characters in my head as of 2020, a movie Mm -hmm. is in development. Okay. Very interested how somebody is going to do this. Yeah. Well, and you got to get New England and you got to get New England in there because I, I, you know. I, I do the, the, the New England is part of the character. In absolutely. That yeah, absolutely agree. Because I want to say they do it in the fall too, don't they? Um, or is it in the spring? In my head, it's in the fall. Maybe that's and what and it I is. would agree with you that I think that's correct. I, I, I think it is. It's not, I, I don't think it's in the summer. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're right, that you're right. It's in the fall. Um, so so yeah so so they get shot if they go below it because they've got the soldiers on these track vehicles they're mm-hmm. going alongside yeah. and they're monitoring all of yeah. them so anyway uh, the next book uh, was Eyes of the Dragon uh-huh. uh, the book was origi- originally released in 1984 uh, in a limited edition hardcover which I had mm-hmm. uh, but was later published for the mass market in 1987 yeah this is another one which is a beautiful beautiful it's a book. good fantasy story. Uh, the Eyes of the Dragon takes place entirely within the realm of Delane, which is ruled by King Roland, and Delane itself is located within Inworld from the Dark Tower series. Yep. Uh, it's told from the perspective of an unnamed storyteller who speaks very casually and frankly to the reader. Uh, King Roland's magician, Flag, mm-hmm. again, we have Randall Flag, yep. uh, seeking to destroy the kingdom of Delane, and he sees his plans ruined by the good heart of Queen Sasha, Roland's wife. Uh, and after Sasha gives birth to Peter, um, who is a noble and worthy future king, Flag realizes that his position, his plans, and his life may be in danger because of Peter. It's a gorgeous fantasy story. Mm-hmm. And Stephen King wrote it for his children. Did he really? Um, his daughter told him... I, I read somewhere that his daughter told him his books were too scary for her, and he wrote a fantasy book for his children. Right on. Um, Many fans rejected this book. Yeah. 
uh, because it's an epic fantasy yeah. and it had little or no elements of, of, of the horror that he's best known for. Yeah. Um, and interestingly enough, the, the, the backlash he got for eyes of the dragon is what gave him the idea for misery for a murderous fan. He's unsatisfied <laughs> with the final installment yeah. of his book. Series. I don't like this. Um, then write your own. I know. <laughs> uh, I, it's, I, I've, I've read eyes of the dragon time and time mm-hmm. and time again. I love the story between Peter and his brother. And I forgot to write the character's name down, what the brother's name is. And I feel terrible about that. Yeah. But the relationship between Peter and his father and Peter's brother and his father, um, you know, Queen Sasha dies mm-hmm. and uh, Peter Peter ends up getting in trouble because of Flag. And it's just, I, 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 I can't tell you how beautiful this book is because it, it is, like I said, one of my favorites. In 2019, Hulu announced it was adapting the book to a series, but in 2020, they canceled the project due to budgetary concerns and changing to, of Hulu's executive team. Right. I could see that because um, it, it, I, I think this would be, I think this could be on the scale of Lord of the Rings yeah. because it's going to take some time. The, the, next, uh, the next book, or actually books, is the Dark Tower series. Uh-huh. Overall, it's a great series. Um, it consists of The Gunslinger from 1982. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the Drawing of the Three from 1987. Uh, the Wastelands in 91. Wizard and Glass in 97. The Sisters of Illyria in 98. Wolves of the Kala in 2003. Song of Susanna, 2004. The Dark Tower, 2004. And The Wind Through the Keyhole in 2012. So, so you see from the first two books, Gunslinger, The Drawing of the Three, five years. Then we went four years till uh, from The Drawing of the Three to The Wastelands. Mm-hmm. We went six years between The Wastelands and The Wizard and Glass, and that's when The Green Mile came out, was in between those. And then he picked it up, yes. um, which was, I, I, I was so relieved. Uh, the Dark Tower incorporates themes from multiple genres, including dark fantasy, science, fi- science fantasy, horror, and western. It describes a gunslinger and his quest towards a tower, which is the nature of both uh, both physical and the metaphorical. Uh, the series and the use of the Dark Tower expands upon Stephen King's multiverse, and in doing so, links many of his other novels together. Right, like I had said. Um, so yeah, multiple decades to get to the end of the series. It was maddening. Mm-hmm. It was maddening waiting for the next book. Yeah. I read somewhere he even got threats from his fans to finish the book. There finish was, the book! There was one thread I saw that they threatened to kill their teddy bear if he didn't hurry up and finish. <laughs> and people did. People got mad when the Green yeah. Mile came out. They're like, oh my God, what are you doing with the Dark Tower? Yeah. Um, but this was such a labor of love for him. He wanted to make it right. Yeah. If um, you, yeah, if, if you're not going to do it, if you're going to do it, do it right. Take your time. Oh, yeah. It's like... Uh, uh, the Game of Thrones guy. What's his name? Um, uh, 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 Martin. Yeah. Martin. George R. R. Martin. George R. R. Martin. Yeah. It's, it, 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 people love those books. Hey, the series is already over. Right. And we still haven't got the next book. Right. Right. Um, I did find some of the Stephen King books, uh, the, the Dark Tower books, a little slower and not as engaging as others. Uh-huh. But overall, it's, it's really, it, it really is a good story with one caveat. Uh-huh. One caveat. The ending is bullshit. Wow. The ending is bullshit, and I hated the ending. The funny thing is, Stephen King warns the readers. Yeah. Hey, if you like the way the story in- ends, stop here. Stop here. Don't read farther. Don't read you any further. You have been warned. You have been warned. Who the hell's not going to read on? Who is not going to? He does it, and it's maddening because he tells you, know what? you. This is probably for all the threats he got. <laughs> It's like, okay, hey, I want to win this now. <laughs> it killed me because I saw that warning and I was like, oh, I'm fucking reading on. Are you kidding me? You know, four decades I've waited for, or almost four decades for this to come out. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I, I hated the ending. I hated it. He warned me. I didn't listen and I hated it. So the movie came out in 2017. I needed this to be good. Yeah. I say that so many times. I need, like somebody owes me something, but whatever. Gotta have um, it. It it wasn't. I thought it was terrible. It wasn't. Good. I I thought it was terrible. It took like four or five of the Dark Tower books and just 
crushed them all together into a jumble of a movie. Um, Flag wasn't good. Wasn't a good character in it. Mm-hmm. Um, or, or was he even, I don't remember if he was even called flag at that point. Cause in the movie, but it just, oh, they did such a bad treatment of it. I was so upset about this movie. Right on. I've heard people that didn't read the book that thought the movie was okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, I read the book and mm, yeah, I just, uh, just crushed me. Just crushed me. Um, I have some honorable mentions of favorite books. Uh-huh. Uh, my first one is Needful Things. Okay. Uh, the book was originally published in 1991. Uh-huh. Uh, the movie was released uh, August 27th, 1993. The great Max von Sydow. Yes, who played Leland Gaunt, who is a new arrival to Castle Rock. Um, and I can't believe this is the first time I'm mentioning Castle Rock. <laughs> um, Derry is another one of his fictional towns. Oh, I loved the series for... I was I think it was called Castle. No. I, and I haven't watched the series. It, there Castle Rock is out now. Yeah. And the one before that was um Yeah. I've only I watched a little bit of Castle remember. Rock. I'm remembering the other series. Yeah, the other series. And so that's one of them that I haven't watched. Yeah. And I and I need to. I I've I, I like I liked the first series a lot. And I heard a lot of people did. Yeah. I just I just couldn't get into it. Uh I need I need I to go back believe, and do it. I can't it. remember the name of that series because I was really into it too. Um well look it up. Okay. Um, so Leland Gaunt, yes, Max von Sydow uh, in the movie. Uh, he he sells collectibles and antiques in Castle Rock where, um, as the shop owner, he asks customers to perform a prank or mysterious deed in exchange for the item they are drawn to. Uh, and this, of course, becomes very nefarious and begins chaos and death in the town. So um, the movie is from 1993. If you didn't read the book, the movie is bad. Yeah. Or, yeah. If you read the book, the movie is downright awful. Right on. Um, I'm convinced to this day this movie was the cause of a girl dumping me because we had a date to this movie. Uh-huh. We both loved the book, and the movie was simply that damn bad. So that's why she dumped you? You took me to this! I think so to this day. Um, she doesn't listen to our show. I know that. She thinks our show is boring. So. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> so I can talk about her, so I don't care. I know who this is. Right. Uh, Haven was the name of that series. Haven, and and yes. I loved Haven. I, I heard Haven was very, very good. Uh, honorable mention number two, mm-hmm. Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption. Oh. Yes. The book released in the collection Different Seasons in 1982. Mm-hmm. Uh, the book is really, really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, The movie, The Shawshank Redemption, was released September 22nd, 1994, and is a masterpiece. This is the greatest of his adaptations. Of 100%. Yes. 100%. Yes. This is a stop-down movie for me. Uh Uh-huh. I I have watched it over and over and over again. It is beautiful. Yes. Um, From the the time it starts till the time it ends in Ziwat Neho. Well, and as a note. Um, the Oscar nominees for the year this came out uh-huh. was Forrest Gump, uh-huh. Four Weddings and a Funeral, uh-huh. Pulp Fiction, uh-huh. Quiz Show, uh-huh. and The Shawshank Redemption. Uh huh. I, 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 oh. The story itself. Yeah, yeah. Let's not, you know, let's not stack the deck. I know. <laughs> against I, them. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, and that's and and I've said that so many times over the years. I think that was the best year of Oscar movies ever. Uh-huh. Because take all of those movies I named. Mm-hmm. Seriously, tell me. I know Forrest Gump won. Uh-huh. Four Weddings and a Funeral could have won in any year. Yeah. Pulp Fiction could have won in any yep. year. Quiz Show could have won in any yes. year. And The Shawshank Redemption could have won in any year. Yep. I I, I wouldn't have been able to pick out that group. Yeah. That's, yeah. I, I got to think it was close. Yeah. Um, the story is entirely told by the character Red, uh, mm-hmm. in a narrative he claims to have been writing from September 75 to January 76, with an, an additional chapter added in spring of 1977. Uh, in 1947, in May... It is Morgan Freeman's voice. It is, yeah, you, you, can't, you can't hear it without his voice anymore. Uh, in 1947, in Maine, Andy Dufresne's, a banker, is tried and convicted for the double murder of his wife and her lover. Despite his claims of innocence, and he is shent, sent shent, he is sent to Shawshank State Penitentiary to serve a double life sentence. That's right. And it's the story of, really, Andy. Yeah, the um, 30 years he spends in there. Right. What happens to him when he's there, it's brutal sometimes. Uh, mm-hmm. He gets brutally raped, mm-hmm. uh, beat up, mm-hmm. um, and it's and it's how he survives Shawshank Prison. Yep. Uh, because he is innocent. That's yes. the thing. As the reader, you know it. he didn't do it. He didn't do it. And, and at one point, 
Okay. He finds out that, yeah. that, 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 that there's someone who knows he didn't do it. Yeah. And they try to help him get out and... Doesn't work. Yeah, because the prison warden wants to keep him. Correct. Because he helps him. He helps him cook the books. Yep. yep. Um, so, again, that's it's, it's a beautiful book. I think even greater movie. Yeah. Um, watch that. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about, in my opinion... I want to have a Rita Hayworth poster with a tunnel behind it, though. Oh, sure. Why not? <laughs> um, I want to talk about what my opinion is of his scariest books. Uh-huh. Uh, the first one is Pet Cemetery. Okay. Uh, the book was released on November 14th, 1983. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a movie made in 1989 and a sequel in 1992. There was also a second adaption of the original uh, released in 2019. I don't remember that. I oh, yeah. There's a, there was a new Pet Cemetery. I didn't see it either. Yeah. And I don't know if there's a sequel or second release to that as well. <clears throat> the Ramones did the theme song to oh, Pet Cemetery. They? Yeah. I don't want to be buried in a pet cemetery. Okay, I hate that already. Yeah, well, actually, it was one of their bigger hits. And I hate that already. Uh, uh, even Stephen King considers this his scariest book and believes that he took it too far. <laughs> and this uh, is because he lived in that one scary house, right? Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with him. Um, this book is about uh, the Creed family when they move into a beautiful old house in rural Maine, and all seems too good to be true. A physician father, beautiful wife, charming uh -huh. little daughter, adorable infant son. Now they're in an idyllic home. Uh, as a family, they've got it all right down to the friendly cat. Mm -hmm. But the nearby woods hide a blood-chilling truth more terrifying than death itself and hideously more powerful. Wow. That's the synopsis I read online. <laughs> nice. Well, that's kind of nice. It's like that synopsis of Shadowrun. It's like, that is the best description of Shadowrun I've ever heard. Um, yeah, Pet Cemetery terrified me. Yeah. Terrified me. Uh, the next one is It. Uh, the book released September 15th, 1986. Uh, the first movie was a 1992-part, 192-minute miniseries released in November of 1990. Mm -hmm. um, the second movie was also shown in two parts, the first in 2017, the second in 2019. Yep. Um, why is it the scariest? Well, first of all, I fear clowns. Yes, I have, you do. I, I have, I, I, I'm terrified by clowns. Second, this one is just downright scary. Yeah. Uh, the whole book from start to finish. Um, the story follows the experiences of seven children and then later as adults uh, as they are terrorized by an evil entity that explores, exploits the fears of its victims to disguise itself while hunting its prey. It primarily uh, appears in the form of Pennywise the Dancing Clown to attract its preferred prey of young children. Ooh. The last one of the scariest book. Beep, beep, Richie. Ugh. And I, I, I love Tim Curry's version Hold on. much, much better. <clears throat> I got to clear my throat. Just <clears throat> Don't you want your balloon? Don't you want it? Don't you want it? Tim, Don't you want your balloon? Tim Curry was brilliant. Yeah. As, as I wish I could was. do the voice better. Um, the last one that I thought was the scariest is The Stand. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of all, because when I first read it, I caught the flu. <gasps> while I was reading it. Ooh. And so the book was just terrifying. And honestly... The COVID pandemic should bring a new level of fear to this book. Yes. Um, I, I, I think it's a, a wholly terrifying book, um, and it's a brilliant, beautiful book. So I highly recommend reading the unabridged version. The last thing, and I'm sorry I've gone so long on this. You're I good. wanted to include some things about Stephen King that even the most dedicated fan may not know. Right on. Um, his longest book is The Stand, the unedited, unedited edition yes. at 1,152 pages. Yep. Second is It at 1,138. Hey, there you go. Uh -huh. Hey, all right. Uh, Stephen King is afraid of the number 13. Okay. Uh, he Triska, never, Triska, Triska decaphobia. decaphobia. Yeah. Um, he never stops writing if the page number is 13 or a multiple of 13. Oh, wow. Uh, if he is reading, he will not stop on page 94, 193, or 382 as the sums of those add up to the number 13. <laughs> right on. Uh, he was rejected for military service due to terrible vision, punctured eardrums, flat feet, and abnormally high blood pressure for someone who was only in his 20s at the time. Wow. Wow. Uh, Sleepwalkers was the first film written by Stephen King that was not based on a pre-existing book. Okay. He hates the Stanley Kubrick version of The Shining. And I mentioned that in our yeah. Halloween episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I personally disagree. I yeah. think The Shining is one of the top horror movies of all time, but the ABC miniseries is worth a watch. I just felt it was much more thankful to the book. Yeah. But he hates it. He didn't like it. 
Uh, he is in the Guinness Book of World Records as having the most books made into movies, more than any other living author. Yeah, it was, what did you say, like 49? Uh, yeah. Wow. That's a lot. He is slowly going blind. Oh, no. He suffers from macular degeneration, which is the loss of a person's central vision. Uh, at this point in his life, he's nearly legally blind. Oh, no. He once wrote a musical <laughs> with uh, John Mellencamp. It's called The Ghost Brothers of Darkland County. The concept was a Southern Gothic tale. I love Southern Gothic literature. <laughs> of two brothers who hate one another but are forced by their father to spend time in a haunted cabin where they visit. Uh, they are visited by the ghosts of dead brothers who also hated one another. It debuted in Atlanta, Georgia in 2012, and the soundtrack can even be found online. Right on. Uh, his short stories were first published in porn magazines, as I said. He was often paid less than $100 from his stories. There, Playboy was in there. For his stories for magazines like Playboy and Cavalier. Really? Uh -huh, less than $100. Uh, the short stories from this time period were all published as a collection in Night Shift. Oh, okay. That's what Night Shift was. Yep. Oh, that's why he called it Night Shift. Yep. <laughs> uh, he coached a Little League baseball team to a state championship. Okay. Uh, he's a diehard baseball fan. He loves yes. the Red Sox. Uh, in 1989, he coached his son Owen's Little League team, the Bangor West Club, to the state championship. And he feels that his family is bonded around their share of the love of baseball. And my final point that I have is he will spend months or even years writing the opening sentences to a book. Uh, he said, quote, an opening line should invite the reader to begin the story. It should say, listen, come in here. You want to know about this. Oh, okay. So, like, he writes... He writes the story, and then he goes back and writes the opening? Uh, sometimes he'll write the opening and just sit and think about the whole story, because oh, wow. he wants that to open up the book. Wow. Um, so, so yeah, I, 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 find, I find Stephen King to be a very fascinating uh, author, a very fascinating person. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I apologize that that was so long. My mouth is a little dry. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, Stephen King is an, an obsession for me. I nerd out over him. Uh, yes, uh, you do, sir. And, uh, you know, I, I there was so much that, that I felt I could cover. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I didn't bore anybody with Stephen <laughs> King. Uh, hopefully if people found it interesting for me to do the nerdery side of it. Right on. Because I... I I spent a lot of time on this one, yeah. um, really kind of thinking through, you know, what I, what I wanted to cover, put down as my favorites and, and, and really give people information because I hope people go out there and read his stuff, enjoy the stuff that he writes because he is a phenomenal, phenomenal writer. Um, <laughs> I'll say this. I have I I have a ton of respect for a writer, mm -hmm. and when he says that somebody's writing is shit, mm -hmm. I'm going to listen to him, and uh, that's my belief of Twilight. Oh yeah, that he he said he, that he thought the writing was shit. shit. <laughs> so he didn't like Twilight. I gave it a shot. I didn't like it. You should have just listened. <laughs> oh, I, I I prayed for Bella's death the whole book that right I was on. reading it. I, I won't stop a book once I once I start, and I had to just power through it. I couldn't stand it. I I I, I, I stop books all the time, and what it is is I'll stop them and go back and read them later. But like the talisman, you were talking about the talisman. I don't think I ever got past a hundred pages in that book. Oh, you should go. Oh, I well, I was trying to read it when I was seventeen, and you know, pick ADHD. It up. It's hard to, hard to keep up track again. stuff. You you will have the best time reading yeah. that book. I think, I think so. Cause you know, when I got into my twenties, I, I became a voracious reader mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I think maybe I should. Yeah. I should give it a shot. All the ones that were on my list, I guarantee you, you will not be upset with. Yeah. And 11, well, 22, 63, you've got to yeah. read the yeah, book. Yeah. I want to read that one. Beautiful book. And, and, and I will stand on it. I think it is one of the best books ever written. No, not and just his book, but not just, just his, period. Ever, period. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's that great of a book. Um, he has a lot of movies that aren't really good uh, mm -hmm. in, you know, as adaptation of his book. I, I was bored with Under the Dome mm -hmm. on CBS. I was bored with it. The book is good, uh -huh. uh, but I, I, I just... You didn't I, like it? No, I didn't I, know that I, was him. I hated it. I absolutely yeah, hated I, it. Yeah, I, I, I didn't really check it out. I mean, again, I was watching Haven at the time, though. Right. So. And Haven uh, was great. Carrie is a very faithful adaptation of the book. Uh -huh. uh, Misery is a very, very good adaptation of the book. Yeah. 
um, with one particular scene in question that's different in the book and in the movie. Um, I won't ruin that for anybody. Let them watch it. But, uh, but, but do yourself a favor. Go out there. Pick up his books. Mm-hmm. You don't even have to start with Carrie. You can. Yeah. But the ones that I mentioned, I, yeah. absolutely just beautiful, beautiful mm-hmm. books. So, again, I'm sorry, so sorry that went long. I, I, I nerded out. I obsessed That's over okay. Stephen King. That's, okay. That's uh, okay. But I appreciate you taking that ride with me. I appreciate it. That was a fun ride. Um, and with that, I guess uh, we can go over to the murdery side. Murdery side. Okay. This uh, murder concerns, and this one's actually a, a fairly public case because the Discovery actually did a series about it. It is about Eugene Boisfontaine. Okay. I got my sources from Discovery Go, The Advocate, uh, Biographics World, and Wikipedia. Advocate's good. Yeah, I've, I've, I've taken stuff from there or read stuff off there. Uh, there's not a lot of information on Eugenie Boisfontaine uh, and her background. She just she kind of kept a low profile. So that's kind of what makes this story so interesting. Is this French or Louisiana? Uh, yeah, it's Louisiana. It's Louisiana. Baton Rouge. Okay. So Eugenie Boisfontaine was just 34 years old in 1997. She was still a student at the time. Uh, as the case is decades old, very much information about her is known to the public, except uh, that she was a graduate of Louisiana State uh, University. Similarly, similar, similarly. There you go. Yeah, thank you. That's not a word. Uh, her date, uh, date of her parents' names, and the rest of her early childhood is also not released to the media. So they, they like to keep things private. So they did that. Uh, in June 1997 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Eugenie Boisfontaine disappeared. Her body was found three months later in Bayou uh, Munchac, uh, nearby Iberville Parish, 15 miles south of Baton Rouge. Wow. Her head had blunt force trauma. Uh, it was a singular murder. Uh, they don't know if it was a singular murder or from a string of serial murders in the area. There are 60 cases of missing and murdered women in the area during the time period, and several serial murders lived in nearby Baton Rouge. Yeah, there's. Uh, I, I'm actually going to cover them at some point. There is the Baton Rouge killer, mm-hmm. and there is also the other Baton Rouge yeah. killer. Well, and Iberville Parish is known as the Killing Fields now because of this, the series that they did about Eugene. Oh, wow. And the fact that they find bodies in this bayou a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Boisfontaine was last seen on the 13th of June, 1997, uh, at the place of her residence, uh, Baton Rouge investigators uh, started finding out clues, uh, uh, for before that, a usual jogger in the area found out Eugene's, uh, found Eugene's credit card and license close to the university lake. Uh, the cards were arranged weirdly in a circle, hmm. which they found interesting. A few days later, uh, search troops went on for a more in-depth search in the lake and found out her keys as well as, uh, or as well. It was only after four months in August 97 that her body was found. It was uh, very decomposed, uh, you know, especially it being in the south of right. eastern Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which is very wet if you've never been there. Right. Uh, and she was in Bayou Man- uh, Manchac. Manchac. Okay. Uh, by that time, her skull was fractured, and the investigators speculated she was kidnapped while going for a usual jogging round around the lake. Two similar cases of murder have happened a few years back near to where U- uh, Eugene lived. Uh, the serial killer Derek Todd Lee was accused of it, so people started uh, thinking that uh, you know maybe he was right. the one that killed Eugene. Uh, scientists even tried to find DNA of the murderer uh, by searching for her dental and nail records and hoping that she had tried uh, biting or scratching the attacker. Right. Uh, unluckily, no extra DNA was detected, just Eugene's. Uh, a TV show called The Killing Fields on Discovery Channel started the investigation of the murder 20 years later. Wow. Yeah. Uh, in the reality TV show, Officer Rody Sanchez tried unraveling the mystery behind uh, Boisfontaine's demise. However, the case is now close uh, as the show couldn't find anything to resolve it. So, 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 so we have, <laughs> this is an unsolved case yeah, so that jumping, they did a TV yeah, series about. Jumping ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, they don't know if Eugene was uh, uh, married. Uh, they, they don't know much about her husband. Eugene was married at the time of her death. Uh, she was married to a man named uh, Mike Schmidt and after her death, Mike was suffering from immense grief. Uh, he isolated himself from people and stayed alone all the time. She wasn't living with him at the time. Mm-hmm. So technically they were married, but they hadn't been together in a few years. So so maybe you're going to cover it. I'm sorry if I jump ahead, but mm-hmm. it, it, 
why did they rule out the Baton Rouge killers as they, possibilities? They they haven't necessarily. Okay. I, I will get to that. Okay, uh, okay. But Mike uh, was one of the suspects of the murder and asked for a sample of DNA. He refused to provide it. Uh, he ref- refusal forced the investigation team to get the samples without his consent and knowledge. Hence, they became successful in doing uh, uh, collecting the DNA uh, from the handle, uh, the door handle of his car. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the test came out negative. I wonder why he refused it. Don't know. Huh. Uh, later, after finding out, Mike threatened to sue the team for forcibly attaining his DNA uh, without his consent. Uh, the matter later got resolved when Mike was given uh, some privacy from the series. You know, I need to look that up. It, is that against the law to take some... So, so from the car or from garbage, which it's happened. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, I thought that garbage was fair game. That's what I thought, too. Yeah. I mean, the, because you've thrown it away. The yeah. the 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 Erons, yeah. uh, the East Area, whatever, however that, whatever that is, uh, he was, they, they eventually got his DNA from some garbage. Uh, yeah. It was from a 23andMe, and then they were able to match it up through some garbage. And off of a car, I mean, I guess it depends on where they go. Get it? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm yeah. going to have to look that up. I'm very curious on that. Do you really have to give permission for them to take it off of a car in a parking lot? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, either way, it it came out negative. Right. And, right. 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 And they they agreed to to uh, the series. I mean, maybe that's the thing. He didn't sue the police. He he sued the Discovery series mm-hmm. that was that had reopened the investigation. Hmm. Okay. Um. Eugene, no one knows about Eugene Boifonte's net worth before her death. Uh, she had, she was already a graduate, but she was going back for what appears to be another degree. Okay. Um, when she, when she died, Eugene was a student. Uh, she, I uh, suppose she hasn't started her career at this point, but she was 34 mm-hmm. and she'd already had a degree from the university. So it was, it was kind of unusual. Well, it may be that she just couldn't get a job in her degree. In her field. Yeah. yeah. She may have been working odd jobs until then. Yeah. Right. And she came from a nice middle-class family. Uh, she wasn't rich at the time of her death. However, she wasn't really poor either. She was, she had her own house. Mm-hmm. Uh, granted, uh, uh, Louisiana, uh, housing prices are not nearly as high as they are here or anywhere else around the country. Detective Roddy Sanchez was the first investigator assigned to the case in 1997. Uh, but because he could never stop thinking about it, he came out of retirement to try to solve the crime. Uh, detective Aubrey St. Angelo is a young detective who was helping Sanchez, uh, on this case. His father had worked with Sanchez for many years before Sanchez had retired. Um, uh, both detectives are joined by many other detectives in the Iberville Parish Sheriff's Office. Uh, suspects during the in show investigate features in the show were uh, Derek Todd Lee, also known as the Baton Rouge serial killer, mm-hmm. uh, an identified male named Robert that Eugene may have dated at the time of her murder, and Michael Schmidt, her ex-husband. Uh, the words splash across the screen at the opening of a new two crime show amount amount to a pledge of the program's authenticity. This is an active homicide investigation uh, and is shot in real time. Uh, it's repeated against the backdrop of scenes from Everville Parish, uh, the, the beautiful swamps, and every commercial break during the Discovery Channel of the Killing Fields, um, they'll show a, a shot of the swamps and, mm-hmm. and say, hey, this is an active crime scene. So Interesting. Uh, the stars of the show were the detectives. Mm-hmm. They were actually working this um, in their criminal division. They say that every statement they gave was true, and they re- renewed the investigation in the very cold case of Eugene Boifontaine. Uh, but they also underscore that this is a typical homicide for those investigators because they're being followed by TV cameras. Right. And they, they chased down leads, then with their deputies. Uh, they said doing the show didn't change what they did. Uh, it just changed They just changed how they did it. Apparently, it gave them a little more money they Mm -hmm. had a a little more money and a little more pull because politically it was a bigger deal because 20 years ago you know nobody knew anything about this eugene bonfontaine she right she 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 was she kept to herself there wasn't a lot of information released about her so in 1997 uh when the case went cold nobody said anything but now now that they've uh that they had the show there's a big there's a big uh support 
in the first sure. episode. Well, uh, sure, and and it's and it's not just here. There are a lot of cases that mm-hmm. we now have internet sleuths on. Yeah. Um, the the Eliza Lamb disappearance uh, is one of those where you had internet sleuths going yeah. through the footage and going through her uh, her online entries, mm-hmm. and they were trying to figure out. Um, they were trying to figure out who, uh, what happened to Eliza Lamb. Was she, you know, was she killed? Uh, did she disappear on her own? Um, and internet sleuths can be good. Yes. Um, it, you know, there's there's the one, uh, wh- what is the name of the show? I think it's um, uh, Don't Kill Cats or yeah, uh, whatever the name of that one is. Uh, internet sleuths got on that one as well. Um, and there can be good, but there can also be very bad. Um, the Eliza Lamb one again is, is, is a perfect case of that because internet sleuths, because of things they uncovered, they wrongly accused a, uh, a heavy metal musician yeah. whose career and life has been ruined. Yeah, that's not that's not fair. He wasn't guilty. Um, the facts that they portrayed on the internet were not correct. Yeah, the timelines were not correct, and and a very innocent man um, was was drugged through the mud, and he, and he he said he has not been able to recover. Yeah. from this. Right on. Um, and, and so and so yeah, so so there's the good and the bad of that, but yeah, internet sleuth is a big thing. Now. Yeah. Yeah, well, it, 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 in this because because of the series, a lot it, it, it captivated a lot of people, particularly in and around Louisiana. Sure, uh, the show's, show's first episode, which aired January fifth, uh, the retired detective Roddy Sanchez tells Major Ronnie Herbert uh, he'd like to temporarily come back into the fold to crack open the Boisfontaine case, and he does. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a new lead in Eugene's case. This is I just found this out. This is where I got this from the Advocate and Biographics World. Uh, Aubrey received a new lead in the Eugenie's Boisfontaine case. Her ex-husband did indeed own a Nissan truck that could be the same one that they said was lurking outside her house. So basically, she was going uh, she was going on a run. Mm-hmm. Uh, a jogger saw her, which he normally does, um, and, and she was going on a run around the lake, and she never came back. She never showed up back to her house. Now, she had talked about this, this gentleman named, uh, named Robert who she'd been seeing that she talked to a friend about, but nobody knew who Robert was. No one had met Robert yet. Okay. And of course there was still Mike Schmidt. Uh, but uh, as far as I know, the DNA has, has been ruled out on all of these people, right. including the, the, uh, the, um, the Baton Rouge killer, Baton Rouge killer who apparently had an alibi. I think he was engaged in another crime when this was going on. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So again, nothing yet. Uh, but, if I hear anything, I will let you guys know. So. Well, yeah, and I, I, I hadn't heard from that at all. Eugene Boisfontaine. No, yeah. Um, I, the, the, the Baton Rouge killer and the other Baton Rouge killer, uh, I, I have on my list of subjects to talk okay. about. So it's interesting they interweave into here. Yes, or at least one of them does. Um, that's that's really fascinating. Um, I have heard before that you you do get bodies that are drug up from the various bayous. Yes. Um, it's, I mean, New Orleans is very violent. Yes. Um, As is Baton Rouge. Uh, you know, they're, they, they, at the, at the far end of the French quarter, um, you, 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 you see this area and it's, it's down by, um, Madame Latreux, Madame Latreux, Latreux, whatever that one is, mm-hmm. the, the voodoo shop. Yeah. Um, just about a block away from that, you see this, street disappear into nothingness into the swamp no 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 into black Mm -hmm. it's it's there's no street lights beyond this and and i've heard from multiple sources you you don't go down there uh you know stay in the lighted areas of the french quarter don't go to the dark dark don't go to the dark area because people have disappeared people have have gone and never come back i was terrified when miranda wanted to go to tulane i mean besides the cost of it yeah um just the 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 horrible things that I've that I've heard out of their uh, disappearances of students. There's there's actually one that I, I would like to cover too that disappeared from uh, from Tulane. Uh, it, it's it's just 
something like this doesn't surprise me, yeah. but it's a good story. Uh, I, I wish we had information on, I hate that. I hate that we have an unsolved, uh, murder, but uh, I mean, I've covered unsolved murders and I just hate that you don't get that payoff at the end of, aha, this was the guy. And this is, this, this is who we're going to get arrested and, and blah, 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 blah. Um, I, I, I hope there's more development in this case on the ones that I've got that don't have, uh, any finality. I'm, you know, I keep looking for, for those as well. Cause I, I just want to see the finality of it. So yeah. great job. Good oh, story. Well, thank you. I, 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 I'm trying. I, I, <laughs> I think your murders are a little more, uh, put together than mine. I apologize for that, but, uh, I, you know, I, I just, I spent, I spent a lot of time yeah. on, on mine, a yeah. lot of time, a lot of time. Uh, next week's episode, um, uh, I, the next week's episode I have spent, and I'll talk about it a little bit more next week, over two months wow. on this episode. And, wow. and, I'll, and I'll tell you more about that when we talk about it. Right on. Um, but you know, what, what, what fascinates me or, or, or the thing that, that gets me is as I go through these murders, I will go down these rabbit holes and I will look at these, you know, at theories and other things that I find. And then I'll find a point of interest that leads me to another site and to another site and to another site. Um, and, and so, you know, that's why I enjoy covering the murder because I just, I, I can't get enough of it. And I will just sit there for hours re- researching stuff. So, but no, you did a great job. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I love doing, you know, when we get to do these swaps. Why uh, swaps? I'd been looking forward to doing the Stephen King one for a while. Right I, on. I had it on my list. And then when Karen asked for it, I said, you know what? 25, that's going to be it. Let's do it. I, I'm going to get on it. Stephen and, King. And uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. You may have been out of the room when I was saying it. I have almost 12 pages of notes. Oh, goodness. That I did on Stephen oh, King. Oh, goodness. And then and I would go back. I, I was editing my notes as late as last night. Oh, okay. You know, I've, I've got an upcoming one. Uh, I wanted to do Michael Mann in the first couple of seasons of Miami Vice. Mm-hmm. Uh, so far, it is up to 17 pages. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right on. I, 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 don't, I don't doubt that. I, yeah. can, I could easily see that. Um, so, but, uh, but thanks for joining us for our, our wife swap. Uh, Thank you as so we much. Call it. Uh, so much fun. We have just finished 25. Episodes. 25. I know. Isn't that incredible? We're halfway through the year. Okay. Well, okay. Next week we'll be halfway through the year. Right. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it amazes me when I think about that number, 25. Yeah. 25. Yeah. Because um, honestly, I, it was just less than a year ago when we really started this idea. Because I want to say, was it about a year ago? I we... think when we started ramping it up, because as we had talked about, William had mentioned, William mentioned it more than once that uh-huh. we needed to do a radio show. And and I was like, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. He did. That, that would be cool. That would be cool. Um, Will is nodding in agreement. He is. And, mm-hmm. uh, and then we started talking about it and we started ramping things up. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Friday Foot Sunday. <laughs> Caramel. Extra nuts. <laughs> Cherry on top. No, 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 no. You're so nasty. <laughs> You're so nasty. <laughs> he giggled. Got him. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think it was probably about a year ago where we started talking about uh, uh, really becoming serious about this. Yeah. And then we, we did a lot of planning, a lot of planning, and then mm-hmm. we finally got into it. Um, but, yeah, as, as I've oh, sat God, there and closed... We were- we record like three months before we even released an episode. We did. Be, well, and originally, you know, we thought that we weren't going to be able to release until September. Yeah. Because we had no idea how long these were going to take to, yeah. to record. We That's had right. no idea how long these were going to edit. And 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 we're on a pretty pretty tight schedule yes. now, even though we're ahead, uh-huh. because we record three episodes and then between the end of the third episode uh, that we record that weekend, we've basically got two weeks Mm -hmm. to listen to the recordings, edit the recordings, and then get them finalized and uploaded. Um, And on top of that, do the research for the next set of episodes. Yes. You know, I'm I'm actually on vacation as of Tuesday. We're not we're not leaving town until until Thursday. Um but I'm going to spend probably those two days re- researching for my next episodes because I don't know when I'm going to have time between now and the next uh, next recording session. Um, but thank you to all the listeners yes. out there who have stayed with us for 25 episodes. Um, 
it's it, it it is it is absolutely amazed me and and it just does my heart good when I see new people liking the show. New people. Uh when I see downloads uh of the show, it 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 just really touches my heart that people are are enjoying it and they're they're listening to us two idiots talk. Yes. Uh, you know, sometimes we get really I posted that on sp- Facebook. These two idiots, <laughs> <laughs> handsome idiots. And, uh, so I very, very much appreciate all the listeners out there. I love yes. the feedback we've gotten. I've loved the suggestions we've gotten. Um, so, so yeah, so, so thank you to everybody for that. Um, so as, as we kind of talk about following, uh, please do make sure to check out our face, or not our Facebook, our website. Yes. Uh, Nerdy and Nerdy and com. Com. Yes. Uh, where there you can find the links to our social yes. media. Uh, you can find our merchandise, yes. which, uh, which is awesome. I'm glad that's out there. Yay, um, merch. We have our link to our Patreon out there. And, you know, as I talk about that, it's it's so funny. I feel like a PBS special. If you want to continue hearing quality programming like the ones you have just watched, please consider donating to our show. <laughs> um, so I kind of feel that way whenever I mention our Patreon. Patron, oh, that means we're going to have to give out tote bags and goofy <laughs> mugs. <laughs> Uh, but we do thank uh, thank all of our patrons out there. You can find the link to our Patreon if you would yes. like to uh, help support our show, so that we can uh, continue bringing uh, this uh, uh, this quality show to you. Quality, uh, please and thank you. Please and thank you. You can find our, our links out there. You can also find uh, links to all of our contact information mm-hmm. if you need to contact us. Uh, let us know uh, things you want to hear. Yeah. Uh, things you want us to change about the show. Yes. Don't necessarily mean we're going to, but we'll at least listen to it. Yes. <laughs> I, matter of fact, uh, I had one of our listeners sent me a message, or I may have sent both of us a message, saying that they would like more than one episode a week. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> and I'm like, God, I would love to do that, but uh, it's, yeah. it's going to take us some time. Yeah, maybe a few years down the road. Yeah, if we could ever make this a full-time thing where, where we didn't have to work other jobs, that yeah, maybe That's I right. could have more than yeah, one. Yeah, week. yeah, yeah. Get, 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 get your friends to listen, and we'll, we'll be happy to oblige. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so, so that, that'll take us to the end of the record recording week. And, uh, with that, I have been Jeffrey with your nerdery and I have been Zig with your murdery. Cue the music.